Today, I'm going to give you nine steps for a healthy brain. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And you know, Eli and everybody else, in today's times, lack of time is a status symbol. Most of us don't let other people spend our money. Likewise, we should limit their power to spend our time. Also, I have been given the same amount of time every day as everybody else. The great achievers of the world don't have any more time than I do. It is simply untrue to say, I don't have enough time. What is not the same for everybody is energy. Too often people don't know the difference between a fast track and a frantic track. You see, I can is more important than IQ. The great trouble with most of us is that our demands upon ourselves are so feeble, our inner calling is so weak and so intermittent that it makes no significant or permanent impression on our creative energies. It lacks the forcefulness and the consistency that attracts the universe to transmit desire into reality. It is through our subconscious that we're able to make a wireless connection to the universal supply closet. For example, if you want to order a product online, you must make the connection directly with the supplier. A mere thought or desire without a currency exchange will not, be, will not bring the UPS truck driver to your door to deliver your package. Your currency to the universe is a consistent burning desire for achievement. Your belief. Anything less is a bounce check. Is it any wonder that two of the greatest books on this subject, subject are entitled Think and Grow Rich and As a Man Thinketh? Success and failure both leave clues. Your subconscious mind is like a garden and you must be very careful what you plant there. Every thought, every emotion, and every suggestion is a seed planted in the subconscious soil and will bring you the harvest that is planted. It doesn't matter what kind of thought seed that you plant, whether it's poverty or prosperity, failure or success, happiness or misery, you're going to reap a harvest in kind. If you impress vividly, intensely, and persistently upon the creative mind within you, your determination to be what you long to be and if you register your vow to succeed in what you're doing and do your best to actualize your desire, nothing in the world can stand in the way of your success. Every great inventor, every great discoverer, every great genius has felt the thrill of that inward force and mysterious power which has come to his aid in writing the book, painting the canvas, orchestrating the musical, composing the poem, or whatever he was trying to create or discover to achieve the dream of his mind's eye. The mystery of mind is only dimly understood. Very few of us have a faint realization of its immense hidden powers. The body becomes unconscious in sleep, and all of its voluntary activities cease. What does the mind do when the body sleeps? Well, we know it doesn't sleep. Wavering in the mind makes wavering execution. The weakening of self-confidence, the development of timidity, is often the unfortunate results of a liberal education. Unassuming humbleness, patience, and tolerance are very desirable qualities in their right places. They are, however, most unfortunate when they are not subordinated to self-faith because while the body sleeps, your memory and imagination come out to play. They explore scenes of your past or explore scenes of your future. 
They are completely unattached from your body during sleep. That part of your mind that continues to be active when we sleep is that marvelous force from the great within that when manifested correctly enables man to reach unlimited heights. We are tapping a new source of power that is unique to our conscious selves. Your subconscious never sleeps, but is tirelessly working on the suggestion it receives from the conscious mind. Your habitual thought, your convictions, your beliefs, your dreams, and your visions are all impressed upon it and will ultimately be expressed therein. Your subconscious mind is your servant. It instantly perceives without objection, without questioning, whether it is something big or small, whether it is right or wrong, to obey the order and follow the suggestion that you give it. So plant your goal, your focus in your mind. Plant that seed in your mind. Care for it. Work steadily toward your goal with singular focus and it will become a reality. It not only will, but there is also no way that it cannot. It's a law, like the laws of Sir Isaac Newton, like the laws of gravity and electricity. It has no conscience and knows no right or wrong. It just is. It always works and it is inflexible. Picture and focus on your goal in a relaxed, positive way. Picture yourself in your mind's eye as having already achieved this goal. See yourself doing the things that you'll be doing when you have reached your goal. It is done unto you as you believe. Every law of nature delivers its power to us in the proportion to the way that we use it. I want to give you nine steps to keep your brain healthy. And I believe and I'm not positive, but I believe I got these from a gentleman named Joey Ryman, who is a outstanding businessman and uh, a recognized good author. So let's go over these nine steps. Number one, speak to the universe and pray or say what you want. Create the vision of achieving this objective. Send out the vibe that your vision has been achieved. Two, when you're meditating, listen to what the universe is telling you. Coincidence is the method that is used for the higher powers and anonymity. I hope I said that right. Three, keep what's important important. There's a difference between a lump in your oatmeal and a lump in your throat or your breast. Remember, when you visualize success, that the money and fame are, when you visualize success, money and fame are meaningless. Because have you ever seen a hearse with a U-Haul behind it? Fourth, keep your brain on a schedule. Set aside a specific, quiet thinking time. <clears throat> the sense of control a schedule gives you makes your thinking sessions more productive and reduces stress, which also makes your thinking meditating sessions more productive. Five, be passionate. A regularly scheduled thinking meditating session executed passionately increases the energy output to the universe. It's like the rays of direct sunlight are stronger and more intense than those that are interrupted by clouds. The outward consistent vibe expedites the receipt of the how-to from the higher power. Remember, there is no specific timetable. You will get your how-to when the time is right. In the meantime, continue to press on. You will find that the process becomes more important than the outcome. There is a feeling of inner harmony when all thoughts, 
feelings, senses, and actions are focused on a single goal. It is a restful state of bliss brought on by a passionate flow. Number six, exercise makes your heart rate increase and is good for the brain. Thinking while you're exercising, I sometimes bike, I sometimes walk, sometimes I just sit though, is a productive time to give and receive thoughts. Jogging, the treadmill, jumping rope, among other things, are good thinking exercises. Number seven, be true to yourself during the process. Your uniqueness and authenticity are what separate your creative powers from the creative powers of other people. Number eight, slow your mind down to the speed of sight. Slow down to the speed of wisdom. This is not something you try to do faster, cheaper, and better. Thoughts speed up as you slow down. During your meditation name, change your name to see more and do little. And see the sights, hear the sounds, and heal the aromas, and feel the vibrations. And number nine, quiet minds cannot be perplexed or frightened. The definition of inspire is to breathe in. It makes Meditation makes you conscious of your breathing. You will feel refreshed and regenerated at the conclusion of your session. These are nine steps to help you have a healthy brain, to help you be more creative, to help you plan your day, to help you visualize your goal, to help you to receive input from the infinite mind, to give you ideas, to open up that corridor for your subconscious mind so you can have that communication, the most valued communication of all, that all people that are great achievers tell you they got an inspiration, either a mind flash, an activity, a circumstance that, a circumstance they could not predict or plan. This is working with your most desired partner, the infinite mind. And remember, as always, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.